consciousness in the core of human existence an excerpt from flowering of consciousness consciousness is the core of human existence without consciousness life is meaningless and as a human being if you are not conscious if you are not aware then you are not a human being as yet there are many people who are in the garb of a human being but they are unaware of their moment to moment life moment to moment actions they lead a life of animals buddha taught his monks to be mindful of small things as the methodology to attain to crystallization of consciousness when you are mindful of small things then you can attain to crystallization but normally we are not mindful we are changing our clothes putting our shoes we are not mindful we do it mechanically driving walking doing day to day things we are unmindful when you are mindful of small things you grow in consciousness moment to moment with each situation and each action as you grow in consciousness the moments of unconsciousness begins to get less and less and then one day the season of spring comes and consciousness flowers i have lived with masters in the same house watching them doing their things daily routine things getting up from the bed haphazardly we get up from any side of the bed we use our things unconsciously then we are looking for where did i put my glasses where did i put my keys where did i put my shirt i cannot find it i cannot find my wallet i cannot find my makeup kit if you have been unconscious in the use of these putting them then you will have the similar situation and life will be meaningless full of chaos a spirituality does not mean dressing up like a priest in a particular garb going to the temple a spirituality means being conscious being mindful of moment momentary things small things and each moment when you lift your hand you are mindful i have seen when the food was to be placed in a platter for my grandfather and uncle it has to be put in a particular sequence and in the same way every day now when you look at it here when you are putting the food on the buffet table you can put the food first and the plate afterwards but that is not the way first you pick up the plate you pick up the spoon the cutlery that may be necessary then the things are placed in such a way you do not put the vegetables and gravies first you put the staple food which is rice flat bread then you take the so you put in the same order so his food has to be put in a particular order not like one side of the bowl where you have the gravy you put one kind of chutney and the other kind another side no it has to be put at the right place now when you look at it here how the uh, the table is set all the drinks items are put in the last and whether it is water soft drinks juices are all put together is not like one type of juice is put on the this side of the uh, table and the other side
carries the other type. Everything is meticulous. Now when his clothes have to be hanged, it has to be put in a particular order. So when you are finding the items, you know where the shoes goes, you know where your tops goes, where your pants goes. When you look at it, you just go and observe your cupboard. How haphazard has been the things in it. Mix up. Mindfulness means your tops, day-to-day -to -day tops, shirts are on one place because these are the ones that you use to go to work. Your t-shirts comes in a casual wear. You have your special clothes that you use for special occasions, your trousers, your skirts and all these things go in a separate section. This is what means mindfulness. When you come, your shoes goes in a particular place, your handbag goes in a particular place, your keys goes, the car key goes in a particular place. This is what all means mindfulness. Buddha taught these how to be mindful in doing small things. In the beginning, the thoughts remain floating on the inner sky. When consciousness is without thinking, it is awareness. So you have to be trained for this. Either it is done on your own or you are in a particular place. You are going to a cooking class, you are going to a school, college or anywhere basically inherently we teach the system of mindfulness in small things as a human beings we are trained for doing doing brings and strengthens ego ego is the shadow of action and being strengthens consciousness when there is only one thing that is not doing and that is awareness, watchfulness. The only thing that is not part of the world of action is pure awareness. No shadow is created by pure awareness. It is so pure that light can pass through it. It is transparent and no shadow is created. Consciousness without thinking is awareness. Being alert and with no thought is benediction. Remember, being alert and with no thought is benediction. Try it. Whenever you see thinking gathering in you, disperses immediately and mindfully. Pull yourself out of it. Look at the trees without the screen of thinking between you and the tree. Listen to the chirping of the birds with no chirping of the mind inside. Look at the sun rising and feel that inside you also a sun of consciousness is rising. Look at the flower as it has blossomed, its beauty and fragrance captivates you. But let there be no thinking. But do not think about it or assert or state or say that I have seen a beautiful flower. Or you immediately pick up your phone and call your friend and tell him that you have seen a beautiful flower or you have seen a beautiful sunrise. Come out of the house and watch it. You have missed, you have gone into thinking. You have gone into doing, in actions. Be in the moment. When sun is rising, you see a flower blossomed. Simply be. And by and by you will start feeling the glimpses of awareness. As if a fresh breeze has entered your room, which was getting stale and dead. 
or as if a ray of light has entered into the dark night of your soul or as if suddenly life has called you back. The deeper your watchfulness becomes, in the same proportion your awareness deepens and then gaps and intervals start arising. One thought comes and then has disappeared, but the next thought has not yet come in. There is a gap. One cloud has passed and before another comes there is gap. In those gaps for the first time you will have the glimpse or the taste of no mind. In those gaps for the first time you will have glimpses or taste of no mind. You can call it taste of Zen or Tao or Yoga. Names do not matter. In those small intervals, suddenly the sky is clear and the sun is shining. Suddenly the world is full of mystery because all barriers are dropped. The screen of your eyes is no more there. You see clearly and penetratingly. Then whole existence becomes transparent. Remember the innermost core or innerness or flowering of the being is witnessing awareness, watchfulness. You can call it anything, but it will be another meaning of witnessing. Truth alone is pure awareness. And when truth begins to blossom through you, know this as the flowering of consciousness. As consciousness flowers, you are more and more aware. Just by being aware, thoughts start disappearing. There is no need to fight. Your awareness is enough to destroy thoughts and disturbances. And when the mind is empty, the temple is ready. And inside the temple, the only God worth placing is silence. So those three words you have to remember, relaxation, thoughtlessness and silence. And if these three words are no more words to you, instead become experiences, your life will be transformed. I repeat this. So those three words you have to remember, relaxation, thoughtlessness and silence. And if these three words are no more words to you, instead become experiences, your life will be transformed. Through the practice of mindfulness, one can attain to awareness. However, only very few people are born with awareness. Those are the people who die full of awareness. If the death was conscious, then birth will be conscious as well, because death is the one si death is the one side, and birth is the other side of the same coin. This is why my so much emphasis is on being awake and alert. Upanishads say, "Utishta Jagrat, get up and awake." When you are aware through life's roads, then you will be aware in the final moments of death as well. A conscious death brings conscious birth as well. Instead it is benediction to be born conscious and die as well. Awareness is the greatest alchemy possible. Just go on becoming more and more aware and you will find your life starts changing for better in every possible dimension. It will bring great fulfillment. Mahavir was the first man in the history of human consciousness who has actually worked out that if a man can remember and be aware for 48 minutes continuously, that is enough. He will be enlightened. 48 minutes of awareness and nobody can prevent him. Just 48 minutes is enough to be enlightened. 
but it is difficult even for 48 seconds to be aware. For awareness you need not renounce the world or go to Himalayas or monasteries or anywhere else. Your life gives you enough opportunities to be aware. Wherever you are, be aware. Each moment circumstances and situations comes when you can be aware or unaware and there is no need to do all this showbiz paraphernalia that you are a highly spiritual person. All that is nonsense. The holy cow dung. Do not be worried about that. Just practice awareness. Be mindful of small things and each moment, each circumstance comes when you can be aware or unaware. Life is the greatest monastery, life is the greatest temple, life is the greatest sojourn where you can be aware moment to moment. Somebody insults you, listen to it with full awareness and you will be surprised the insult is no more an insult. You may even smile. It hurts only when it is received in an awareness. Somebody praises and appreciates you again, listen with a alertness and then nobody can persuade you to do foolish things. Nobody can bribe you and flattery too becomes impossible. You may smile at the whole nonsense of it. Listen, watch and be aware. And by and by, a different quality of being arises in you, which is neither of the body, nor the feeling, nor of the thoughts. A different pillar of flame starts gathering within you and becomes more and more crystallized. As this awareness becomes crystallized, for the first time you will feel more and more that you are. This is the feeling of being and then moods will become more and more relevant. They will come and go, but you will remain unperturbed, undisturbed, undaunted. The climate will change around you. Someone may die, you may have financial loss, but you will remain unchanged as if nothing has happened. Whatsoever happens on the outside will not in any way change you within. The within remains absolutely pure and uncorrupted. You are the watcher on the hill. This is your true nature. Awareness means you are listening to me unfocused. Of course alertness is there. You have not fallen asleep, but alert to these birds, their chirpings, to the wind that passes through the trees, alert to everything that is happening in this precise single moment. Concentration excludes much, includes little. Awareness excludes nothing, includes all. Awareness is a state of no mind. You are, yet you are not focused. You are just a mirror reflecting and echoing all. There is beauty in it. And the silence and the stillness too. Suddenly you are and you are not. And the miracle starts happening. In the silence you feel compassion. Compassion for all suffering beings. It is not to be practiced either. It comes on its own. This moment is enough. Be aware in this moment. This very moment is total. And when next moment you forget, so be it. Be aware of your forgetfulness. One has to be attentive even to one's inactiveness. There are moments when you are aware. In those moments you are aware of awareness. 
it is not a simple awareness it is complex you are aware of your awareness then there are moments when you are aware of your unawareness too but awareness even in those moments continues as subtraction even in those moments of unawareness the awareness continues as a subtraction sometimes you are aware of your awareness and other times you are aware of your unawareness aware of your forgetfulness in both cases you are aware and that is beautiful once you have tasted awareness nothing is worth it even the greatest treasure of the world is meaningless you have known the greatest bliss of life then suddenly many things simply drop they look stupid and become foolish the motivation is not there the desire is not there the dreams have fallen this is awareness practice awareness by becoming more and more aware one becomes more aware there is no other way to it it is a simple process whatsoever you are doing do it with such consciousness as if it is a question of life and death as if a sword is hanging over you i teach you how to live life more attentively mindfully and meditatively with love caring and consciousness be aware as you travels through life's roads moment to moment new meaning will arise bliss will overflow as the fragrance of awareness be aware as you travels through life's roads moment to moment new meaning will arise bliss will overflow as the fragrance of awareness bliss will overflow as the fragrance of awareness only this much for this morning